In this film series, we look into five Celtic port towns that are connected and intertwined by the ferry routes that serve them. To get to know the landscape and the history, we hear from the people in the know. We meet up with four local characters, County Councillor Josh, local historian David, local librarian Yuriko, and Heritage Centre volunteer Marilyn. We hear of their passion for heritage and how their love for the place they call home is shaping the future. Welcome to Port's Past and Present, Pembroke Dock. The land for Pembroke Dock was purchased in 1814. The dockyard then came later. The dockyard actually produced five royal yachts, over 200 warships, and in the 1800s and into the 1900s, to think that Queen Victoria actually commissioned five royal yachts this far west is just amazing. You don't think of a little town like Pembroke Dock as having produced all of that. Pembroke Dock has had a, a rather strange history. Because my family's always lived here, stories have been passed down from father to son. When I was in a position to investigate them, that's what I did. When I went to my dad, one of the stories he told me, he said, the Imperial Japanese Navy was born in Pembroke Dock. Oh, wow! And he said, one of the officers planted a tree. When I had the opportunity, I followed it up and I found that the Japanese in the 1850s were a feudal state and they were totally isolated. Japan woke up and said, hang on, the big outside world is coming in, we'd better take notice. And they suddenly realised that China and Russia had steam navies and they said, hang on, we must have a navy. They sent sons of samurai to Greenwich College, one of whom was a lad called Hehechiro Togo. He was sent down to Pembroke Dock. His ship was the Haiye. Now, Haiye was launched in 1877. The ship left Pembroke Dock with a Royal Navy captain, and Hehechiro Togo was her first lieutenant. And when they arrived in Japan, he found a ginkgo tree. He sent it back with a message, please plant this tree in the garden of my lodgings in appreciation of the kindness you've shown me. It was planted, it thrives to this day. Another story my dad told me was about sailors buried in Angle, and I found out that there were 10 Japanese sailors buried there, but they've got no memorial. So I got in touch with the ship owners who survived World War II and said, look, there's a grave of 10 of your sailors here. It's no memorial. I want to build a memorial. I designed it, I negotiated with the church to build it, and I thought, this is a Japanese war memorial, it must have a Japanese inscription. And I thought, well, I don't know Japanese. I heard about Yoriko, so I rang her up. I didn't even have to persuade her. She said, right, I'll do it straight away. About three years ago, local historian David James re-erected it in this beautiful granite memorial. I got involved with him in a way that liaising with stonemasons. In Japan, we write letters from top to bottom, from right to left. Whereas in Western world, you write sentences horizontal way, so totally different way. Initially, I didn't expect any Japanese people living here and gradually I got to know there are more Japanese people living but I didn't know anything about the, the history or object like this the connecting between two countries and this is the pure act of kindness and thoughtfulness of the local Pembrokeshire people. I'm so so amazed and uh, yeah humbled and grateful. The thing that I enjoy and interests me most about Pembroke Dock is finding out all the things that happened here so many years ago. 
The Know Your Street project of Pembroke Dock was set up a few years ago, basically just to tell people about the street that we lived in, its history, the people who lived there in years gone by. And it seemed such an interesting project to get involved in that we, we just went along, not realising that our street was one of the longest streets in the town, as we later found out. I suppose you could say it's like a family tree for the whole street. It goes back to 1891 and a census in 1901. And it's interesting in as much as so many families live together, the extended families, mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law. Well, in the case of my family, just up the street, they had six children in the cottage. Certainly an insight into how things were years ago. I wanted to do this partly to protect the heritage and the history, but also my own history because my grandfather's brother came to live in this street in early 1900s. I love the thought that some of my relatives actually walked along here when going into work in the dockyard. An uncle who was a blacksmith, his two sons who were shipwrights, they all walked along this street along with probably hundreds of other people over the years. Children waiting for their, their fathers to come out or walking in, perhaps on a Sunday, going to the, the, the dockyard church. All these memories, all these, these thoughts, these ideas, the stories, it's absolutely wonderful. It's all untapped, really. There's so much, so much more, not just what's happening today. I got elected to Pembrokeshire County Council at the age of 19. I wanted to give back to the community that I grew up in, sort of the people that I come to knew and the place I came to love. Pembroke Dock really is quite a sort of new town. It's, you know, over 200 years old, but that's quite new in terms of, you know, sort of most modern towns. It hasn't been around for that long, but there's just so many stories of people out there that if you just walk down any street, you can guarantee that everyone's got something different and unique to say. So when I'm running, one of the things I like to do is I like to run sort of around the whole kind of historical assets. You know, when you run alongside the port wall or when you're running through sort of some of the old buildings sort of in Pembroke Dock, you're actually sort of in the middle of that history. And when you look around yourself, you can kind of see the story of Pembroke Dock. You can kind of see how it's developed. The defensible barracks here behind me is a grade two star Victorian era build. So it was built in the 1840s to actually house the Royal Marines in Pembroke Dock. So this building is pretty much almost 200 years old. It's actually surrounded by a dry moat as well. And the building is actually massive. So it's got a really good view, obviously over the waterway because it was used as a defensible barracks. But it's sort of a really sort of iconic building really that stands tall on the top of Pembroke Dock. Behind these dockyard walls, in the western hangar of the spring of 1979, the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back was built. So it's kept as a huge secret, but the hangars are that big, because they held the Sunderland flying boats during the war, that they were able to build a life-size replica of the Millennium Falcon to actually move and use in The Empire Strikes Back. If you look at Pembroke Dock and kind of where it grew, Imagine it just grew in the port and then slowly, slowly, slowly expanded from there. And when more housing was built, when more people were needed, that's when it started, grew out and out and out from there. The port, I think, is kind of the heart of Pembroke Dock. You still have this established town that kind of had grown and grown. And I think, despite all of that, you've still got the port at the heart of it. And even today, with the ferry terminal and still with people passing through, whilst things have changed, you could probably argue that they haven't. There are so many visitors who come back here because grandfather or great uncle or someone was actually stationed here during the war. So yes, it is a very transient place. People are forever coming to visit. Ports by their very nature, the people are transient. The ship comes in, people get off, people get on, the ship goes, more people come, more people go. So it's very fluid, but it's an interesting place. I think in the last few years, it's starting to find its own spark of vitality. And this is something that people like me and a lot of other people are trying to stimulate, you know. Come and see us, you don't know what you're missing.